everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting a Blood Angels Redemptor Dreadnought. However, as you can see, this Redemptor Dreadnought is currently having a bit of a maintenance issue. Now, <laughs> he has actually been built with magnets, so this is a magnetized Redemptor Dreadnought. And he's also had a bit of custom work that's gone on. So, just to explain a little bit about what's happened here, Firstly, we've got some sanguinary guard wings. They've been glued to the front with some super glue, like so. That just makes it look, well, about a thousand times more um, Blood Angels-y. Uh, it's also, this section doesn't actually have any magnets on it. So that's kind of, like I said, these come from the sanguinary guard kit. And these three hanging gems, they come from the Pro Blood Angels Primaris upgrade sprue. You get two, so you get one of the large ones and one of the ones with the skull in it. In, in each packet. I, of course, have many Blood Angels upgrade sprues, so I was able to salvage a third one. So, here we go. It's a very simple, elegant uh, little kind of dress up for the for the Redemptor, but it makes it look ever so Blood Angels-y. Well, we've also, I have actually lied to you there and said we don't have any magnets. We do actually have some magnets on here. So, just to explain about what magnets are actually on here. For the chest weapons, what I've got in there is I've got a one eighth magnet, so a two by three or three by two magnet that is in there. Whereas for these components, because they are so narrow, I've actually put a one sixteenth magnet in. And that magnet is absolutely strong enough to be able to hold these components in like that. No problems at all. And as you can see, we've got the storm bolters here. So there's the storm bolters and we've got the frag storm grenade launchers as well. They're in there. Like that. Perfect. And ultimately, you've got this kind of nice little guide track on these com components. You've got the kind of two little nubbins there. As long as you put the magnet in between the middle, and you put the magnet on that side and between the middle, it just, it lines up absolutely no problem. And it keeps it nice and flush with the, with the model. So there you go, that's the carapace. The uh, legs, they don't have any magnets or anything on. They're just as they are. And we've also got this shoulder joint. So this is the shoulder joint for the guns. I apologize, my thumb is very much covered in primer. Now, for the shoulder joint for the guns, I have put a magnet in here. Now that is another one of these three by two magnets. So that is this kind of size. So what I did is I used a drill to drill down into that and then I just sunk that magnet in there and jobs are good and covered it with a little bit of super glue just to make sure that's nice and secure. And then what I did on these, on this, these, this, these pieces, which are the big guns, as you can see on the top here, this needs a little bit of extra primer actually on it. Um, so we'll use this one just for now. Um, what they what usually you have is you have a little square joint on the top there which slots right in there like that and then you would glue it in and jobs are good and everyone's happy but what i've done here is because that kind of square joint wasn't wide enough i have actually clippered it off and then sunk a magnet in there again another one of these three by two or one eighth magnets it just goes on there like that Settled it in with a bit of super glue. So that goes in like that, no problem. As you can see, similarly, this one goes in there like that, no problem. And as I say, it does need a little bit more priming on the top there. I just clearly missed that little bit there. Additionally, we've got this arm. Oh, I should also mention that these haven't been magnetized here. They don't need to be because they just, they just go in and they twist around. Don't need to magnetize that section. You can if you want, but there's not really much point in doing that. So on the power fist, what we've done is we've sunk a magnet in here, and that is because it only needs the one magnet because there's really already a snug fit on these weapons. So we've got the little onslaught gatling here that just attaches like that. No problem. It's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. We've got the heavy flamer as well. 
That just goes on there nicely. And this little Blood Angels icon, I believe comes with um, some Forge World resin stuff. It's a resin piece. I'm not entirely actually sure where it comes from because this is for a customer. I wouldn't normally magnetize things. There you go. So, I mean, these magnets are more than capable of holding all of these components together. Yeah, they do a lovely job. And they're very strong. You can just drop it on there. That's the wrong way around, but there you go. Um, so yeah, that's how I've done the magnets because there's an argument to be made that you could sink the magnet into there, but I just figured putting it on there made it a lot easier because what you do is kind of just line it up like that. You know, it's going there. You know, it kind of sits flush like that because of those two connectors, both in here and here. So what we just do is draw drill a magnet in there and then drill one in the center of the weapon itself as well. And then it just snaps on there like that. Lovely stuff. So, there you have it. And then what we can do is just twist, twist these back into place to a position that we like, like that. Similarly for this, we can just twist that on and we can attach the gun and then what we'll do is once we're finished painting him, we will assemble the body together like so. So with all that aside, he has been primed in gray sear and we are gonna get on with painting him. Just for reference one more time actually, I should show you this. These are the magnets. So these little ones here are the 1 16th or two by one or three by one, I should say. And I'll drop the links for these in, in Amazon, should you wish. Um, there you go, there's the little ones and those are the big white ones. And there you go. So there we go, that's the, that's the admin out of the way. So once you've got your Dreadnought primed, like I have in Grace here, it's time to grab your paints and your brushes and then we're gonna get started. So the place we're gonna start with when painting our Redemptor Dreadnought is we're actually gonna start by painting the inner metallic area. So this is gonna be like kind of the, the, you know, the metallic skeleton of the Dreadnought. I'm gonna be demonstrating this on the legs, but I'm also gonna be doing this on the carapace as well, well, on, on, the, on the torso as well. And I'll show you where I place the, place the metals once we've done this. But that's the color we're gonna start with. And this is just for ease. If we start with the red, then we're gonna to have to pick around the red and we don't wanna to have to do that. So what we can do is we can be a little bit more kind of care, careless, not that we will be, we'll be nice and careful, but uh, we can be a little bit more haphazard with the application of this silver, rather than kind of having to be absolutely definitely careful and then try and fix the contrast. It's much easier to kind of just return that, any mistakes to a gray sear base and then do it like that. So the color we're gonna be using is Iron Warriors. We're gonna just start by getting this all over the areas that we want to be silver. So as I say, this is gonna be the inner areas of the Dreadnought. So we're just, like I said, starting on the legs. I'm gonna be starting, start right there in, the, in that leg joint with the Iron Warriors. Get right in behind it as well. I'm just gonna start getting this all over all of these sections of the Dreadnought. And so with that Iron Warriors applied, you should have some legs that look somewhat like this. You should have a carapace or a torso that looks somewhat like this. Don't worry, there are more silver details. We're gonna do those a little bit later. For example, some of these pipes, we don't need to do them right now. Uh, we've also done the arms because these are similar joints. We've got those bits in and around there that we've also painted with the Iron Warriors. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shade all of those details. And the color we're gonna use is a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part basilicano gray mix. And the reason the contrast medium there is just to give us a little bit more control when it comes down to adding that flow, or rather a sentence that would make sense to make the flow a little bit easier to control. Just means that the, the paint stays a little bit wetter for longer whilst we're painting these larger open areas. It's not so thin that it loses any of that kind of potency, as you can see just there on that leg. So you want to go all over all of our, these silver details like this. And 
and then we'll come back. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to paint the armour next. Um, so the colour we're going to be using is Blood Angels Red and Contrast Medium. It's going to be a roughly two parts Contrast Medium to one part Blood Angels Red mix. And the reason for this is that we want this to be a little bit thinner, so we've got a nice amount of control over it. And also so that we can kind of just get a, a kind of cleaner finish on it. Now it might be a little thin, so it might not be quite as red as you want it. But um, if that is the case, you can just do a second mixture of this and go right over it. Now, as a second point, don't worry too much. If you do get kind of any a streaking effect or any dark blobs, try to avoid it by having these nice big broad brush strokes like I'm doing, using the tip of your brush, just to kind of glide across the surface, nice and gentle. Don't, don't disturb the surface too much. And don't kind of whack the paint on there with reckless abandon. So you can see it goes on nice and smooth like this, but there will inevitably be a point where we'll get a little bit of a streaking finish. Now, if this happens, particularly if I do a second coat, which I probably will, because this is not quite red enough for me, but it's nice and smooth. So if we do get that streaking finish, or if you do use too much paint at once, just use your brush to move it around. As I say, we are going to do something afterwards to really enrich that tone, depending on taste. Just grab that little edge corner there. There we go. So you just want to go over all of the red armour. Like this with this mixture. Just being very methodical and just very, very calm as you go. See, I'm just being very careful with my brush strokes. Just being very gentle with the model. Just a nice light pressure. Like so. So there's some nice looking feet there. So what we're going to do now is move on to this bit. Again, just using those nice broad brush strokes. Get that nice smooth finish. I'm always kind of going with the grain of the model. So which direction does it make sense for you to go in with your brush stroke? You can see that contrast medium is really making that flow nice and smooth. Just going to finish this section whilst it's still wet. Just miss those little bits there. Got this bit just in here. Just a little bit of a dark patch. Just use the brush to move that around again, just gliding across the surface. Being very gentle. Like so, because we've got a little bit of a spillage on that kneecap, that's the next bit I'm going to do, so as to not give that 
little spillage too much time to dry. So if I try and disturb that paint once it's dried, that's when you get like that scratchiness. It's definitely not what we want. section try and do those Got this little piece here on the heel as well So, I've just finished the one leg. As you can see, okay, we're coming around there because we've got that little bit of overspill. bit here. We got a little bit just there. Which we missed. So that's roughly what it'll look like after one coat. Now I've already done it here on the Dreadnought's body with the single first coat. So what I'm just going to quickly demonstrate, just move that out of the way, is what it looks like once it gets that second coat on there. So once again, just going to grab a little bit of this and I'm just going to go over the top. Just like that. See? Perfect. And so with that done, you should have a redemptive dreadnought that now looks something like this. And I've now mounted the torso onto the legs because, well, there's still some sort of finer details to do, but actually we're now in a position where we can paint the whole thing at once. The arms and stuff, they're still separate, but this is absolutely fine for now. So, the armor is looking pretty spectacular already. It's nice and smooth. There's a couple of areas with a little bit of patchiness, which is exactly what we're gonna fix now. Now, the color we're gonna use is gonna use Mephiston Red, but we're actually gonna thin it down with like five or six parts water, lots and lots of water to create quite a thin glaze-like version of Mephiston Red. So if you just kind of check it out here on my hand, you can see it's very watery like that. It can actually do with having a little bit more water in it. Just add a little bit more water there. There we go. And now it's nice and thin. What we're going to do is we're just going to, on the flats of the panels where we've got a bit of patchiness, and we can do this on all panels to make it, you know, look all completely the same. But for example, just here, we've got a little bit of a smudge. You see that just at the top there? So what I want to do is I just want to add this Mephiston red glaze over the top like this, just avoiding the recesses and the edge. Because contrast paint's done a lot of work for us already, particularly with those two layers. 
working in concert together. But with that with fist and red glaze on, you'll just smooth out any of those slightly darker areas that you may or may not have. Just like that. Just got a little bit, little bit of a patchy finish on here as well. So I'm just gonna do this. section here, like that, like so. You just want to go around picking out these areas. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to move on and we're going to paint in the black details. Now, there's a couple of different styles of black. First of all, we've got some kind of mechanical black. So this like soft joint in the servo on the leg just down here, that's going to be black. Same as, for example, on these, whilst we have done them in the Iron Warriors and then shaded them with the silicon and grey, we do want those sections to also be black over the top. However, the areas that are going to be black are areas like the casing of the power fist, this, shoulder pad and the shoulder pad on the other one um, and various other things like that. Uh, so once again uh, I'm gonna do do the black details um, but the and then I'll demonstrate what it is I've actually done afterwards. Now the first colour was that we're going to be using is basilicon and grey. So what I want to do and this is another example of a good black detail to do. We're going to paint in the casing of the chest weapons. So just down here, and this little section, and of course, if like me you've magnetised your Redemptor Dreadnought, don't forget to do the Storm Bolters. Now again, don't worry about the, the main weapons. And also don't worry if you've got a little bit of red on there because it's basilicon and grey. We'll cover it a little bit and then when we do the black afterwards you won't see any of that red. So similarly like here on this Aquila. I want to get that basilicon and grey all over it. I've got a little bit of red on there but with the combination of basilicon and grey and black templar you won't see any of it. Let's just go around like this, picking out all of the black details. And then we'll come back. And so with that done, you should have a Redemptor Dreadnought that looks something like this. As I said, don't worry. Don't worry too much about doing these weapons just yet. We're going to do those slightly later on. Same for the ones on the Redemptor Fist. I'm just going to tackle those at the same time as they're the main, main weapons. So, with that silicone and grey applied, what we're now going to do is going to take some Black Templar and we're going to use this to paint in all of over the top of all of our silicone and grey details. But what we're also going to do is going to use this on those kind of those, those Iron Hands, no, Iron Warriors <laughs> uh, details that we also want to be black. So, for example, just in here, in, the, in that servo joint, we, also, we just want to add some of that black Templar in there, just like that, like so. Similarly, from all those areas that we've put that basilicon and grey, now just want to cover over them with the black Templar. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Retributor armor to paint in all of our gold details. So this is going to be areas like the 
casings on the hanging gems just down here. The blood drop itself. Like that. We also want to paint in areas such as the decoration around the sarcophagus. And the frame of the wings. So that section there, not the actual feathers. And so with that retributor armor applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some apothecary white. I'm going to use this on the wings of our dreadnought just here. Like so. And next up, we're going to use some Skeleton Horde. We're going to use this for all of our paper. Like so. And next up, we're going to use some Volupus Pink. I'm going to use this for the wax seals. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to use this for those cables in the sock. <clears throat> so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Dark Angels Green. I'm going to use these for the cables. Help if I actually should demonstrate that on camera now, wouldn't it? And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some basilicon and grey to shade all of our gold details. So with that done, it's now time to add some highlights to all of our details. Don't worry about that Mechanicus symbol, we will deal with that very shortly. But as I say, we are going to do some highlights now. And the place we're going to start is on all of that red armour. And the colour we're going to be using is Fire Dragon Bright. All we want to do here is we're going to use this to pick out areas like the rivets. Like so. Like that, as well as, as well as any of the sharpest edges. So, like for example, just here. Just want to get that fire 
my dragon bright on there. Bring it down a little bit. As well. So we don't need to do the whole edge. This contrast has done quite a lot of that work for us. Just like this. And with that done, our red looks pretty fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is gonna highlight all of that black and the color that we're gonna be using for this is Dawnstone. And this is much the same thing. Just wanna start picking out all of the edges feature most prominently. As well as the rivets. Just like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Corax White. And we're going to use this to highlight our white details. Now on my Redemptor Dreadnought, this is going to include the wings. Just here. Peeking out. The feathers. Like so, as well as the white of the Blood Angels icon on the shoulder pad. What we're going to do is we're going to use this to pick out the missiles on the Fragstorm grenade launcher and the Icarus rocket pod. And so, with that done, what we're then going to do is going to use some screaming skull to highlight our paper. that done we then take a small amount of fulgrim pink we use this to highlight our purity seals With that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight those gold details using some Liberator Gold. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of the silver with some iron hand steel.
And so with that done, just before we do all of the gems and lenses and that Mechanica symbol on the back there, we are now just going to quickly focus on getting those weapons up to the same standard, and then we'll do the shiny bits as a final flourish. So we're going to put the Dreadnought to one side, and we're going to pick up our weapons. And the first colour we're going to be using is Basilicanum Grey, and this is going to be to do all of the black, which is going to be the weapon casing. So for example, here on this uh, Plasma Cannon of Doom, just want to start painting this Basilicanum Grey all over. As I say, the weapon casing. This is just like we did with the armor sections on the Dreadnought itself. It can be quite a good idea to, because uh, I've got mine magnetized. It's a good idea to get like half of it done whilst you're holding it. And then whilst it's drying, hang it off the dreadnought. So just put it on there. And so whilst that's drying, then pick up the next one this one and do half of that. We can just do the barrel here actually. Like that. And if you haven't magnetized yours, you don't have to worry about this because your weapons in theory will already be attached. You want to do this on these main cannons. You want to do it on guns as well. And so with that done, you should have a bunch of Dreadnought weapons that look something like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some Black Templar, just like we did on the Dreadnought. I'm going to use this over the top of all that Basilicon and Grey. like this. And so with that done, the weapon should be looking like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to use this to paint in all of our metallic details. So once again, like with the black, we're just going to paint one half, hang it off the dreadnought and then paint the other half of the other ones and so on and so forth. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna take some thin down retributor armor. I'm gonna use this to paint in any gold details. So on the Onslaught Gatling Cannon, we've got this skull here. Just there, nice and simple to cut her in. Like that. Whereas on the plasma, what we want to do is we also want to paint in the little skull just up here. We also want to paint the coils down here. Like that. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Dark Angels Green. We're going to use it to colour in any of the smooth cables. So we've got some here. on our Onslaught Gatling Cannon. And 
and we've also got a big fat one here on the heavy flamer. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down Rune Lord brass to paint in the heat shield of the heavy flamer. With that heat shield painted, what we're now going to do, we're going to use some Talisar Blue to paint in the plasma coils on the plasma weapon. Just want to take that Talisar Blue on our brush and get this all over. These sections. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to finish off the areas that we've already done before. So the silver, the gold, and the black. Um, we're also going to shade this rune or brass. I'm going to shade that with the same colour that we did the silver and gold. So I'm not going to film all of that again. So the highlighting of the black and the silver and the gold, because we've already done that before and you don't need to see that again. But what I will do is I will come back and I'll show you what we're going to highlight that with, as well as the Talisar blue. So, you know, make sure you get your silicon and grey nice and ready to shade all of your silver and gold and that rune lord brass and let's get to it so with the black silver and gold highlights applied our weapons are mostly finished so we should have a finished gatling cannon similarly for the one that goes on the power fist however what we need to do now is we just need to quickly use a little bit of sycorax bronze to highlight the heat shield on the flamer. And with that Sycorax bronze applied, what we're then gonna do is gonna take our plasma weapon and we take a small amount of Corax white I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight at the top here where the coils curl. I like that, just to give it that impression of it being shiny. And so with that done, our plasma Gatling Gatling Heavy Flamer. Whoop. Hey, can't hold on to it. Hold on, hold on to it. Uh, heavy Flamer. And our frag storms and our storm bolters here and here are now all finished. All that's left to do is the lens on the Icarus ro rocket pod, the blood drops, and the sighting lenses, and this lamp up here, as well as that Mechanicus symbol on the back. So what we're gonna do first, is we're just gonna use a small amount of Flesh Terror's Red. And we're gonna use this for all of the lenses that we want to be red. So in this instance, with the Dreadnought, what we wanna do is we wanna color in the blood drops. And next up, we're going to take some orc flesh. I'm going to use this for any of our green lenses. So we've got one up here. One 
one just underneath it. One down here. And this one in here as well. And with that orc flash applied, we then want to take a teeny amount of dawn yellow. We want to use this. In the gaps on the, the lamp. Just here. Like so. With that dawn yellow applied, what we then do is we take a tiny amount of Luganath orange. And we use this as a highlight on our red gems by just picking out the bottom right corner. Like that. And next up we want to do the same thing on the green gems, or lenses I should say now. But this time we're going to use Gorse Blaster Green. Like that. And then next up, I'm going to take some Yandan yellow. I'm going to paint this over the top of that Dawn yellow. And so with all of our gems and our lenses done, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint that Mechanica single symbol on the back. And the way to do it, as I've just checked it out on the product photography, is it's a Mechanica symbol, so it's going to be half black and half white. Only what they've showed is they've said they do the outside right, inside left black, and the inside right and outside left white. So what we do is we take the black Templar, and we start by drawing a line down the middle of the skull. With the Black Templar. Like so. And then we just want to pull this line out even further by colouring in that side of the skull. And then what we do is we also Pull the line out onto the cog by drawing a line up the top here and at the bottom, as I've just done. And then we block in the side that we want to be black. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some apothecary white the white part of the skull. And the cog. And then next up we're going to highlight that black with some Dawnstone, just as we've done twice already before on our weapons and our armour details. And lastly, but by no means leastly, we use some Corax white to highlight the white.
And there we have it. Our Redemptor Dreadnought is now all finished. And he looks fantastic. I love doing this kind of uh, unique Dreadnought type scheme. This is exactly the same thing that I did for my Dreadnought. Sticking the Sanguinary Guard wings on the front. Just to make him look super Blood Angels-y. And it's very, very simple to do. It just immediately elevates the model and it looks fantastic. And it was a lot of fun to paint this guy. Um, I do enjoy painting large armor, weirdly, with contrast. It kind of makes me feel pretty good about my life choices <laughs> in a certain way. And it's very, very effective. And I think you'll agree he looks stunning. Um, yeah, really good job, me. Well done, me. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.